What secretive inhabitants lurk in the shadows of our forests, parks, and gardens, stealthily altering the familiar landscape? Meet invasive plants, restless travelers crossing borders and upsetting the balance of nature in search of new ecosystems. Like weeds on steroids, they displace native plant species with incredible speed and ingenuity. These plants are rebels at heart and can declare, a garden? Well, it's a funny place. But you know, that nice little dump on the outskirts of town suits me. Oh, and don't forget those stylish gullies, perfect for my new photo shoot. By the way, it's very atmospheric under that old bridge too. In the middle of the sidewalk, why not? Have you heard of Poison Ivy from DC Comics? It's a villain who can control plants and create traps for her enemies. Well, well, there's such an ivy in the real world too, and it's just as dangerous. So why is this green villain considered invasive? Simple, it's an aggressive plant that grows quickly and can crowd out native species. It can cause serious damage to the environment by crowding out native plants and animals. Poison ivy can also pose a danger to humans as its sap causes skin burns. A liana that can reach a height of 10 meters. It has shiny dark green leaves and orange red berries. This villain in green is particularly dangerous to humans because it contains poison. Urushiol is an oily substance found in the sap of the plant. Urushiol causes dermatitis when it comes in contact with the skin. Dermatitis is an inflammation of the skin that can cause redness, swelling, pain, and itching. In severe cases, it can lead to blisters and ulcers. Poison ivy was introduced to Europe from North America in the 17th century. The plant quickly spread around the world and is now a problem in many countries. Heracleum Sosnowski is not just any plant, but a true green monster on a huge amount of steroids. A giant weed that can reach the height of a basketball backboard 3 to 5 meters, 9.816 feet, tall with a straight, sturdy stem that reaches a diameter of 12 centimeters, 4.7 inches. No, this is not the plot of a science fiction movie. This is an actual plant named Heracleum Sosnowski. Imagine, you're gardening and all of a sudden, Heracleum Sosnowski. A handsome plant with giant leaves 50, 60 centimeters, 20, 24 inches long, like scenes from the movie Jurassic Park appears on your property, you'd probably think, wow, what an unusual and exotic guest. But here's the catch. This green giant is an uninvited guest with toxic manners. Nowadays, Heracleum Sosnovsky is like an uninvited guest, spreading wherever it wants and crowding out everything. And it all started in the 19th century, when it was brought to Europe and North America as an ornamental plant. In the Soviet Union, it was suddenly decided to be used as cattle fodder. Understandably, the rapid reproduction and huge leaves seemed attractive. But eventually, the cows started giving bitter milk and gave birth to sick calves. Not a good idea, is it? The toxins of Heracleum Sosnowski are still being actively studied. Some of these substances are called furanocaumarins. Believe me, they're not as easy to pronounce as you might think. But what do they do? They increase your skin's susceptibility to sunlight. I think many of you know what happens if you go to the beach without sunscreen. Well, with furanocoumarins, the effect can be even worse. From such action, the cell triggers the mechanisms of apoptosis, that is, programmed death. Massive sudden cell death leads to a large inflammatory process, nettle stings immediately, and the effect of toxins of Heracleum Sosnowski and its relatives manifests itself in about 15 minutes. But without sunshine, the juice of this weed is also dangerous. Furanocoumarins have a cytotoxic effect. They disrupt cell division, cause mutations due to disruption of chromosome integrity, and also trigger apoptosis. Could the Heracleum Sosnovsky, that green villain of nature, become an unexpected savior of mankind? What if it decides to retrain itself and become a true hero? Against cancer? Why not? Scientists are thinking of using its poisons in the fight against this terrible disease, packing them into little fat capsules and sending them straight to the tumors. Isn't that a super plan? A doctor for the skin? Heads up, Heracleum Sosnowski is on the line. Its ingredients are already working to solve skin problems and even autoimmune diseases. A super vacuum cleaner for sewage? Horsetail is ready to absorb all the harmful substances from the rivers. And when it's saturated, we'll simply harvest it back, removing all the trash along with it. A new energy source? Although it would be cool to fuel your car with bioethanol from the Heracleum Sosnowski, wouldn't it? It could be a real competitor to sugarcane and beets. Another species that does quite something quite badly to people is Ambrosia artemisifolia. 
don't be surprised, it really belongs in the super villain ring with the Joker. Why? Because it knows how to impress allergy sufferers with its superpowers, giving them sneezing, tears, and an unforgettable attacking sensation in the nose, conjunctivitis, and even bronchial asthma, spreading its pollen 10 kilometers around itself. But that's not all Ambrosia wormwood can release chemicals called alkaloids that inhibit the growth of other plants. This helps it outcompete native species by blocking their growth hormones. And pheromones attract ants. They help spread ragweed pollen throughout the region. It's a good scheme, isn't it? Strategic planning in action. Ambrosia was introduced to Europe from North America in the 19th century. It was originally used as an animal feed crop and also as an ornamental plant. However, wormwood quickly adapted to the new conditions and became an invasive plant. It is a tall branching plant with toothed leaves. It can reach a height of up to two meters. The flowers of ragweed are small and yellow. They are gathered in inflorescences. Did you know that not only grasses can be invasive weeds? Yes, sometimes even majestic trees can crowd out other plants and even native tree species, just as ragweed does. A typical example of this is Acer negundo, a species with amazing viability, fast growth, and wind pollinated, which makes it potentially dangerous for allergic people. But on the other hand, the same Acer negundo is a tree that can be planted on oil and polluted soils because it has a very high resistance to both atmospheric pollution and soil pollution which, in an environment where humans are so heavily transforming and polluting the environment around them, can be very useful as at least some greenery that will be able to grow. Ash maple is used in different ways in different parts of the world. In China, it is used to make paper. In India, it is used to make musical instruments such as sitars and drums. In North America, it helps to strengthen the banks of rivers and lakes, and in Europe, it is used to create hedges. But don't forget that environmentalists are sounding the alarm on the issue of invasive species for several reasons. Invasive species are alien to the area they enter and they actively enter natural plant communities where they can displace native species. This can lead to a decrease in biodiversity, disruption of ecosystems, and resulting environmental problems. What do you think of these weeds on Maxima? What have you encountered in your region?